high on some type of drug. Every single day of my life, I was drunk off of alcohol. I don't remember at this time of my life that it was one day I didn't leave my house drunk off of alcohol. I was a menace to society. I didn't want to live anymore because I told myself if this is all that life had to offer me. If the money and the cars and the jewelry is not bringing me happiness, then there's no point of living. Because at this time of my life, man, I did about everything that a person might want to do to have fun. So at this time of my life, man, I used to walk around, I used to drive around with a loaded gun, one in the chamber, and I used to be drunk off of alcohol. And I used to look for reasons for somebody to look at me the wrong way, so that I could have an excuse to pull out my gun and shoot them. I already had my alibi down. I already was told, I would have told the police, okay, man, I'm a rap artist. My gun is registered. These people are thugs. They try to steal my jewelry. Man, I had a sick mentality because I thought that in order for me to feel good, I need to hurt somebody. And with that same mentality, I got into a fight with my little brother. My little brother, I sent to the hospital where he had to get staples in his head. And that's like I mentioned in the video, it was a Muslim brother who broke the fight up. He invited me to the mosque. And when I went to the masjid, finally, I remember he gave me literature of the religion of Islam. He gave me the English translation of the Quran. And I remember taking this, this book home, the Quran, and I said, let me, let me read it. And I noticed when I started to read it, even though it was in the English translation, I said, there is no way that these can be the words of a man. Everything that I was reading in this book, I knew for a fact that only the creator of the heavens and the earth can speak like this. Everything that I was looking for in my life, everything that I was looking for in my life, the stuff that I was looking for in my life, such as happiness, I was looking for drugs, I was going to drugs, I was going to alcohol for happiness. I would wake up the next morning sober, my, my depression was still there. My problems were still there. Allah says in the Quran, in the English translation, He says, truly the hearts find tranquility in the remembrance of Allah. Many of us, when we want to find some type of happiness, we search for things in this world to bring us happiness. Many of us believe the ultimate happiness is with money. Many of us believe the ultimate happiness is to attain some type of stuff in this world. I was in the same position. And if that was the case, how come you have millionaires committing suicide? If that was the case, how come you have billionaires committing suicide? So the more that I read this book, the more that I read this book, it had the answers to all the questions that I had through my whole life. I used to always wonder, how come people like my mother and father is dead? How come people like Tupac, all my loved ones are dying? Allah says in the Quran, every soul shall taste death. And when I read that verse in the Quran, I knew that this was from the creator of the heavens and the earth. So I said, this makes sense. We all have to die. Every single one of us have to taste death. Everything that I read in that book, I noticed that the way that I was living my life, it was wrong. I was oppressing women. I was oppressing myself. I was oppressing people. Many people, they say that the religion of Islam oppressed the woman. Before I became a Muslim, man, I was in the entertainment business that teaches you. We put out music disrespecting women. I come from a lifestyle and a business, man, that we used to tell women, if you want to be a model, if you want respect for yourself, take all your clothes off and dance in the rap video. This is your respect. This is the lifestyle that I come from. For the first time in my life, I was able to read some hadiths, narration from the Prophet Muhammad, when he said, those who are best from amongst the Muslims are those that are best to their wives. For the first time in my life, I read a man, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said to treat the woman kind because a woman is a glass vessel. I come from a background that we was harsh towards the woman. I come from a background man, that I didn't even care if I take the life of anyone. I didn't even care about my own life. The first time in my life, believe it or not, the first time in my life when I read that Quran was the first time I started to care about my own life. For the first time that I wanted to live. The reason why I wanted to live, because I wanted more time to worship my creator. Because I, I spent my whole life not worshiping my creator. I spent my whole life taking money as my God. Taking women as my God. Taking my own desires as my Lord. For the first time in my life, I was able to be guided to the true way to give the creator of the heavens and the earth his rights. This made 100% sense to me. Everything that I read in the Quran and the narration of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I couldn't believe that I spent my whole life going without this. I couldn't believe how I could be people living, breathing on this earth that Allah created without that religion in their life. 
It didn't make no sense to me. I said, man, everybody need this in their life. If you want to know how to live your life properly, if you want to know how to give the creator of the heavens and the earth his rights, you have to have this religion in your life. So eventually I was able to retire from the music industry. One of the things I do now is I travel around the world as a motivational speaker. And I want to tell the kids and the youth, because many of the people around the world, especially the Shabab, especially the youth, the young people, the lifestyle that Allah guided me from, many of the youth, they want to go to that lifestyle. Many people are running towards that lifestyle. Many Muslim youth are putting their religion to the side, running towards that lifestyle. As if they see something in that lifestyle that I didn't have a clue with, that I didn't see. As if they see something in that lifestyle, that same lifestyle that got people committing suicide. That same life that took the life of Tupac when he was only 25 years old. That same life that took the life of Gaddafi when he was only 17 years old. That same life that took ODB from the Wu-Tang Clan, committed, he overdosed over drugs. That same life that Michael Jackson had to overdose on drugs just to try to rest, just to try to go to sleep at night. You want this life for yourself? You want this life? That's not the life. From the outside looking in, that life might look good. Because you guys only see five minutes of our life when we was in the music industry. When you turn on a video, you only see five minutes of the life of 50 Cent. Five minutes of the life of Tupac. Five minutes of our life. But you don't see the other side of that life when the cameras say cut. You don't see when people go home to their house and they're on their floor crying because they have no happiness. You don't see that most of the rappers or most people in the entertainment business, I would say 99%, that's a lifestyle, man, that I don't think nobody can be sober to live that lifestyle. You don't see that side of the music industry when you go to the CEO, to the president of the record company, and he loved you so much because you sell the millions of records, that he loved you every day you walk in, he say, oh, you're my favorite, he's smiling your face. And as soon as you put your next record out, and it don't sell more records than the last album, he don't even open his door for you anymore. You don't see that side of the industry that, man, it takes a very strong person mentally and physically to be live in that industry. That one day you could be in front of a crowd of millions of people and they love you. Next thing you know, you go outside, nobody, you go to a concert, nobody even comes to your concert. That has an effect on the people mentally. That lead people to take drugs. Because it's an industry that's so fake and phony that you don't know who to trust and you don't know who to believe. This is the lifestyle that most of the youth want to run towards. This is a lifestyle that most of the youth think is bringing them glory. That's not the true life. That's not the ultimate life. If that lifestyle was all that, how come millions of people or thousands of people in that life is running away from that life to the religion of Islam? How come entertainers that sold millions of records are running away from that life except in the religion of Islam? People like Ghostface Killer from the Wu-Tang Clan. People like Raekwon from the Wu-Tang Clan, they just accepted the religion of Islam. People like Busy Bone from Bone Thugs and Harmony that sold over 30 million records worldwide, they just accepted the religion of Islam. People like the Outlaws, all the members of the Outlaws, Alhamdulillah, they all accepted the religion of Islam. If this life was the ultimate life, how come people are running away from that life? Many of you guys in this room, and the reason why I'm touching up on, because I'm speaking to the majority, and the majority it looked like they come from a Muslim background. It looked like they come from Muslim countries. Many of you have it good, alhamdulillah. Many of you have the way of life from the creator of the heavens and the earth. Many of you are upon the religion of all the prophets, the religion of Adam, the religion of David, Solomon, John the Baptist, Jesus, Abraham, Isaac, Ishmael, Moses, Harun, Aaron, and the last prophet Muhammad, peace be upon. That's why we're supposed to take that religion and we're supposed to implement it in our lives. How can we be a Muslim and we in gangs? That let us know that we have a bad understanding of our religion. How can we be a Muslim and we want to hurt innocent people? That lets you know you have a bad understanding of the religion. How can you be a Muslim and you think in your religion and tell you to go blow yourself up? That lets you know you have a bad understanding of the religion of Islam. Because Allah says in the Quran, whoever take the soul of one person unjustly is as if he took the life of the whole humanity. And whoever saved the soul of one person is as if he saved the soul of the whole humanity. This is what the religion of Islam teaches us.